Good. Okay. Yes. So as I said, I'm, I'm Annette Wheeler and uh, I'm a registered nurse. I, um, I have taken the five levels of courses of Healing Touch um, through Healing Beyond Borders. There are two organizations that formally teach um, Healing Touch, and that is um, Healing Touch Program and Healing um, Beyond Borders. And you can look either one of those on, online and they do uh, tell you when they're having classes. They're very reduced right now because of COVID. So they do still have a few going on in the country, but not a lot yet. We're hoping that'll change in the coming year. Um, I also started training with Wake Forest Integrative where um, my former Healing Touch instructor, Deborah Laramore, um, she had taught Healing Touch with Healing Beyond Borders for probably over 20 years um, when she came to um, Wake Forest Integrative where they asked her to create her own energy program here um, for us. And she did that about, about three years ago and it was going very well um, and then COVID hit. So that's kind of on hiatus right now, but we'll probably be able to resume that again in the coming year. They're looking at probably July as that's the fiscal year. Um, and we do hold them at the Shepherd Center. Uh, on, on Fridays and Saturdays, usually two days, and there's different levels of one through four, and they kind of alternate through the months. So um, let me just dive into it. So <clears throat> it was Albert Einstein that said, energy is everything, and that's all there is to it. He was so right. So um, energy has been described throughout culture. Um, in, in China, they call it qi, or it's the vital force. Um, in the Indian and Tibet tradition, it is prana, um, and you'll hear that a lot in some of your yoga practice. Um, in Hebrew, it is rock, the spirit of God, and in Japan, it's ki. Um, the Sufis call it baraka, and that means the indwelling spiritual force and divine gift. The Lakota tribes, um, I'll let, um, I'm make sure I'm pronouncing this right, but wakin. Um, and meaning great spirit. And then of course in Christianity, we refer to the Holy Spirit. So throughout cultures, people recognize that there is an energy biofield force, which can be measured with a um, gradiometer. Um, and let me go to the next slide. So you can measure energy off of just about anything, um, off of a house, off of a person, off of trees and plants. Um, this is um, a photograph that was um, done with gas exchange visualization or um, GEB. It, uh, it's also referred to as um, Krillian photography and I think it's just really a cool picture showing energy coming off the hand. So we can measure energy in the body through EKGs. So an EKG um, would measure the electrical activity in the heart. An EEG measures electrical activity or energy in the brain. And there's also something um, called a squid, which is a superconducting quantum interference device. Sounds pretty cool. Um, and those are all forms of energy in the body that can be measured. They um, have taken that premise of electromagnetic field and and they've made medical devices to help with healing so this is a PEMF or pulse electromagnetic field therapy you may have heard of a bone stimulator some people are familiar with that so pulsing that electro um, electrical magnetic field stimulates the bone to grow so your hands are kind of like that only they're, they're like jumper cables and you can use them to restore the flow of energy to the body. Um, when you touch another person, your heartbeat EKG can be measured in their brain EEG, which I think is pretty cool. Just shows that your energy is flowing. So healing energy, whether produced by a medical device or projected from the human hand, is a particular frequency or a set of frequencies that stimulates the repair of one or more tissues. And so they've done some research on this and they've found what they feel is helpful for like say, um, energy is uh, measured in hertz. So two, two hertz would be good for nerve generation, seven hertz would be good for bone growth, and that's what that electromagnetic uh, bone stimulator does. 
10 hertz is ligament healing, and then 15 hertz could be capillary formation, um, fibroblast proliferation. I know that's a lot of med medical terms, but it's all good healing. Um, so the different concepts in energy healing is that the biofield refers to the energy that surrounds the body and penetrates the human body. Energy flows throughout the body, and an illness can arise when the energy becomes blocked. Um, energy modalities work to unblock the energies within the body to promote health. And that's just a very basic um, premise. There are many different types of me and methods of energy healing. Um, I'm only touching on a few here, but um, quantum touch um, is based on the principle of re resonance and entrainment. Um, the energy level is amplified through proper breathing and visualization of energy flow in the body. EFT or emotional freedom technique is also known as tapping, um, where folks tap on certain ac acupuncture meridians in the body and they combine that with a positive affirmation. Um, of course, there's healing touch, which is what I do, is a biofield magnetic field around the body um, therapy that is energy-based approach to health and healing. It uses touch to influence the human energy system, specifically the energy field that surrounds the body and the energy centers that control the flow from the energy field to the physical body. And I'll describe that a little bit more on healing touch in some further slides. Um, Reiki, um, which is very popular, and probably the oldest, um, going back what, Karen helped me on that in like a thousand years. <laughs> um, it was, um, uh, the, or I should say the most popular form of Reiki is uh, the OC, Osui. You might be able to help me if I'm saying that right. Um, uh, and it's the, it's a Japanese word meaning um, Rei for um, God's wisdom and higher power and Key, which is the life force energy, um, meaning spiritually guided life force energy. And the method of Reiki involves channeling the universal life of energy to stimulate the integration of mind, body, spirit to enhance the natural healing mechanism. There's also um, Brennan Healing Science, and that was uh, um, started by Bo Dr. Barbara Brennan. She's a healer, teacher, and former NASA physicist. And her best-selling book, Hands of Light, is used throughout most energy um, practices. It is a, it's a textbook that, that is recommended reading for pretty much every method. Um, and it includes the physical body, the chakras, the various levels of the aura, and the dimension um, of hara and intention, and the core spark divine. She has a couple of schools in the country, and then you can actually get a bachelor's or master's degree in her, her method of healing. So healing with energy is, is not new. Um, it's, it's been, a, the concept has been around for a very long time. I mean, 5000 BC, the hieroglyphics of the Egyptian dynasty uh, portrayed hands on healing. In 500 BC, um, Greece uh, used to describe the luminous field around the body. In 400 BC, Hippocrates, um, proclaim that the biofield exists. In the Bible, you'll hear of laying on of the hands. In the 17th and 18th century, Isaac Newton uh, discovered protons, neutrons, and electrons, so that those, those solid objects were not so solid after all. Um, in 19th century, they discovered the electromagnetic field. And in the 20th century, Einstein stated, we now understand that we are just the densest of energy. So, um, I'm not seeing my little bit lit there, but anyway, with research um, now going on, um, we're, we're finding more and more um, scientific evidence to support energy medicine. And Dr. James Oshman, um, or Oshman, he has written many books, and this being his most famous, um, to really support the science behind energy healing. So um, the beginnings of Healing Touch. So Healing Touch is what, what I do. And it was, um, I'm skipping my slides a little bit here. Let's see. Yeah. Um, started by Janet Menken in 1989. She was a registered nurse. 
Um, it's an energy therapy in which practitioners consciously use their hands with intent to promote health and healing. Healing touch utilizes only very light or near body touch to influence the energy field and pen that penetrates and surrounds the body. And this is a picture of my um, instructor and mentor, Deborah Laramore's hands. I just think it's a beautiful picture. Um, so we define healing touch. Healing is a return to, to wholeness within the body, mind, and spirit. It is not about curing. Healing touch works with the human energy system and is classified as a biofield therapy. The goal in healing touch is to restore harmony and balance in order to help a person heal themselves, self-heal. So this is a picture of uh, the hands-off method. So you actually don't have to touch a person if they're not comfortable with it. Um, some of the techniques are just hands off by, by the way they were designed, um, but you're, you're just about three or four inches above the person's body. This would be a demonstration of hands on. And my healing touch story is that I found as a nurse, I was wishing I could offer more than the standard method of care. I wanted something that would take into account the whole person. And Healing Touch has offered me a modality to provide for the mind, body, and spirit. And I like this picture because this is, this is how I feel when I'm doing Healing Touch. <laughs> and I've always loved the Care Bears. Um, so what are the benefits of Healing Touch with or without contact? It increases healing rates of wounds. It decreases pain, diminishes anxiety, creates a sense of relaxation, calm, and serenity can alleviate nausea, um, promote sleep, diminish fatigue, and deepen spiritual connection to the divine. And it can decrease hospital length of stay, studies have shown. And the best part is there is no adverse side effect. So um, as I was saying before, we have classes called the Art of Healing and Touch at Wake Forest Baptist through our integrated department. Um, and that is the website if you were interested in, in signing up for a class. And we're hoping that they will resume. But in the meantime, time, excuse me, the uh, website is still active and you can look at it and get information and descriptions of the classes. Um, and like I said, the Healing Beyond Borders and Healing Touch program, they are still offering some classes, but they're not many of them are local. Um, closest would probably be Georgia, maybe some in Asheville. Um, but I'm sure as things open up, there'll be more and more classes um, offered. And I, I used to do like an energy stick uh, demonstration where we would get together and, and touch hands and hold the energy stick and it would light up, just kind of showing how we transfer energy between people. Um, and that's something that'll be fun to resume in the future. Um, if there's any questions, let me know. So, this is Allison. Um, Annette, when you're talking about that energy stick, I remember you doing that in our class and it is literally measuring what the electrical or the, the energy impulse in our bodies. I remember how it, it, when you grabbed it, it just would light up. Is that, is that right. what it was doing? Well, it, it was, it's talking about, or it, it demonstrates how you pass energy from one person to the other, because if one of us left, took our hand out of the circle, it stopped and one of us put the hand back it just shows that we are able to conduct energy between people between bodies so annette can you describe an encounter a healing touch encounter the person comes in and and lies down on a bed like that that pic, that lady was doing in the picture and then you as the healing touch practitioner what do you do first you scan you hold your hands above them and you kind of scan so body. Um, when you start the process, you know, we, we actually sit with the client and we get a history first and take down, you know, their medications, their um, medical history. Um, if they're having pain anywhere, we have them rate their pain on a scale, um, whatever their issue is that they've come in to be treated for. And some people, it's just a matter of wanting to relax, clear their mind. Um, and other people, it's pain or fatigue, you know, whatever it is, we, we discuss that and we, we set a goal. Um, then, then I have them lay down and, and we usually use like a massage table and, um, 
we what we call attuned to their body and to their vibration with their permission. Um, and, and a lot of you know what healing touches is an intention, is you set an intention um, with your mind basically um, for the for the healing and the and for the betterment of that person. So let's just say they have a migraine or some kind of a pain, then you, you'd want to set your intention that you're going to help relieve that pain. Um, and yes, we do a hand scan um, first. Um, and you know, some people are very sensitive. Some, some people who are practitioners of healing touch are very sensitive and they can scan a body and they can feel where there's a, a lack of energy, um, maybe where there's a block. Um, some practitioners use pendulums and um, they're they're pretty cool because they can pick up on very subtle energies on the body and it's um i, I like that um, and if someone's not comfortable with that we don't have to use it we can just do the hand scan and then um, just depending on what the the issue is there's there's so many different um, techniques you can use there are some um, specifically to clear the mind um, there are some for relaxation for um, connecting the chakras and just providing more energy flow. Um, there are back techniques. Um, there are techniques for, um, let's say someone's gone through a lot of chemotherapy or radiation. You help clear that out of their body. Only You say only what is beneficial will remain and you help clear away the, the not so beneficial side effects. Um, so yeah, you can, it's, it's limitless. You can work on anything that, that's bothering them. Um, and usually you have them rated before, like if it's pain, you have them rated on the same scale that we do in the hospital, like on a one to 10 scale. Um, so that when you get done, you kind of ask them again and see if you know what your results are. And um, you can also do the hand scan and, the, and we normally <clears throat> practice the hand scan and pendulum again at the end of a session to kind of see where we've made progress. Mm -hmm. So you're, you learn about the meridians in the body um healing touch doesn't focus as much as much on the meridians um we don't really call it that we, we focus more on the energy centers or chakras uh -huh. um, you have seven major and then they're also minor at the at the joints um and each one represents something different in the body something in the physical body and the emotional body and with visualization, you can picture the color that is associated with that, which is part of my favorite thing is, is visualizing that color and seeing it expand. Any other questions or comments for Annette? <clears throat> um, I got exposed to healing touch when I was in seminary and um, so we, they, they just turned all of us students loose on each other and I, you know i didn't know if i was gonna be able to do anything or not and i was so we did a, a body scan and I, I over the woman's hips and pelvis it was so weird because there was just no energy there i could feel oh, her yeah. i could feel a tingle in my hands everywhere else on her body except over her hip and pelvic area <laughs> and so later when we were comparing notes she told me she had a hysterectomy you know so her mm -hmm. her there there wasn't anything generating energy right right, there, right. right. You know. and so some, that, was, and yeah, that was really cool people have had surgery uh, there's sometimes such as a area of no energy and then we work to help seal that and help replace that um but what i want to say is that anyone can do this and and you don't even have to know I mean, what do we normally do when we have a headache? We hold our head or anywhere we have a pain. I mean, um, just clearing the energy is very, is very easy to do. I mean, you, you don't have to. I mean, you could take a level one course and know everything you need to know just to help yourself, you know I mean? Or, or to help someone at home uh, who may be hurting a little bit. I mean, it's, everybody has this ability. It's not, you know, it's not unique to just some people. Everybody can do this with some little bit of training. That's cool. So, are there any other questions or comments for Annette? I, um, what about autoimmune diseases and the pain associated or the trauma associated with autoimmune diseases? Uh, do you have many people come into the, um, your uh, clinic wanting to learn how to deal with those or having you? Sure. Sure. How, how does that 
working? Well, um, I don't practice in a clinic, uh, um, but but we do have a clinic at Baptist at Integrative, but they do have uh, um, healers there and you can schedule an appointment, but maybe limited ability right now. But, um, and I usually just do it for um, staff here at the hospital or my family or, you know, um, and, but yes, I mean, people do come in there. There are some techniques and they're called trauma release. So if they feel like it's associated with something traumatic in their, in their life, um, that is something that you can work on and pain. It kind of doesn't really matter what causes it. You can still help to clear it. Um, but you know, there's so many other fascinating subjects or, you know, studies uh, that would go beyond even healing touch about how much we can do with, with the mind in helping to clear and trauma release um, energies that are trapped in our body. And that's a whole other subject I could go on for a long time about. <laughs> but if you have an interest in something like that, I can recommend um, like Dr. Bruce Lipton. He has uh, wrote a book called Biology of Belief, which is incredible about how much we can control ourselves in our own biology. Um, there's also Dr. Joe Dispenza. He does a lot of that type of um, therapy that kind of goes along with, with healing touch and with energy therapy. The, there's so much self-healing that we're capable of. But yes, um, auto, it doesn't really matter what, what it is. We can, we can work on it, you know? So, um, so would and, you recommend uh, this for caregivers who are under a great deal of stress? Some of them's suffering from migraines some of them you know there are so many different areas of concern for caregivers that eventually may show up physically and right yeah. well yeah i mean it, it, if they're having a blockage or if they're having my we work we have a technique for migraines um because ultimately the, the way we feel in, in our field is that if the, the sooner you can get that unblocked the sooner you can get energy to that the better off you are the less effects you're going to have um it's just like when you know our instructor taught us about how if you have an injury a broken bone or something the sooner that person can have some hands-on energy helping that to flow the let we feel the less damage will be done um so so yeah but it's pretty much limitless and that's good to know i've always been intrigued by this and uh it, it seems to me that uh, the it, the society is embracing this more and more and more, overcoming the the blockages we had. Right. Uh, I think so many people want to take back their own control of their health mm -hmm. um, and not be subject to just whatever is thrown at them. You know, we we want to take more responsibility and we want to be able to have control of our own health. And, um, and this is, this is one of the ways you can, you can do that. Um, and someday I'll have to come back with Allison if she invites me back for another subject, but, um, I've had a lot of experience in my family with, with self-healing. I, I had a daughter that was bed bound for six years. She had some autoimmune autonomic, um, things and she has, she's completely healed now. And, um, and some of this has to do with this type of energy medicine and um, it's, it's been incredible. Mm -hmm. So we definitely have the ability, we just have to, to work on it. Um, so. I think my initial uh, fascination was I used to do um, uh, in Charlotte with um, an acupuncturist who was also the daughter of a Chinese medicine medical doctor. Mm -hmm. She had incorporated many different techniques, but it really was effective uh, to have that mm -hmm. in, in every way in my life. And uh, so that kind of initiated my uh, interest. And then I, then it, uh, the senior services I was exposed to the healing touch and um, I really think this is this is a, a wave of the future I really do because people people go to doctors and they get pills to just handle something they don't really get to the source of it right right you're so right and I, yeah acupuncture is great too it works on the same principles of blocked energy so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all right well thank you for your work I mean it's just, oh 
wonderful to hear about. And I'd so you're glad welcome. to know that you're available at Wake Forest, but maybe after COVID. But yeah, I'm, I don't, I, my practice doesn't go there, but my instructor uh, who taught me, Deborah Larimore, and she has, I think, about two or three other practitioners that work with her there. Um, that's their, their full-time job, pretty much. Um, yeah, they do, they do schedule appointments and do uh, healing touch there. Good. Right. And that you did fabulous, even oh, though I know you're you. a little anxious, and I know that we are all shaking our heads up and down um, about um, learning about this. And I'm now going to be Allison, so I'm three people today. Allison <laughs> had to excuse herself, and she'll be back momentarily, but she asked me if I would introduce Karen Lieberman, um, who is um, case manager with the Wilkes CAP program. And Karen is going to jump in and offer um, an additional layer of information um, that complements what Annette was sharing with us. So, and then we'll continue on with the questions later because I know I could probably talk about this all afternoon. So is that okay with everyone? Sure. Okay, deal. Thank you. Well, that's what I was going to say, Annette, that was awesome. Thank you. That was, all right, um, that was perfect. It's, that was perfect. It kind of described everything in a perfect lead into what um, I want to do because she's what she focused on with the intent and um, energy being everywhere. That's just that's what it is. That's so important. And when there's lots of different types of energy therapy, like she was talking about, and um, I'm trained in a different modality, but it's it, it's all really getting positive energy into someone so that like she said you can help heal yourself um but what i so what i wanted to focus on today was really quick things you can do at home that shift energy because we can't all especially now get out to an energy therapist right now and sometimes when you're a caregiver you can't get out at all to a therapist um but you know i do want people to know that when you are a caregiver too there's a lot of you know, energy exchange between people. And, you know, when you're a caregiver, um, you've heard the phrase sucking the life out of you. Well, people really can kind of drain, not intentionally, it's not like they're trying to drain your energy, but if someone is sick or in a persistently bad mood or low energy, that if, if you're a giver, you may be, you know, giving them some of your energy and draining yourself. And on the other hand, you may be one of those people that kind of takes on people's energy. And so it kind of coats you and blocks you. And, you know, all of what Annette was talking about, you know, all helps to bring things to balance. But what you, when you're at home, um, there are things you can do to shift that energy yourself that, that's maybe not as therapeutic, but still it's all shifting the energy. And that's what we want to do. And on a global scale, that's how we change the world, you know? I mean, like she's saying, everyone being connected, all of our energy fields are connected. So like when there's a climate of fear in the world, then it affects everyone. And the more we can all keep ourselves in a state of balance and peace, that's how we help change the world um, on a more global scale, but at the very least yourself and in your household. So I think what I, one, thing I'd like to talk about, um, and then I'm going to go and touch on a bunch of different little things that you can do at home, and if there's some you want to elaborate on, just tell me. But I think when she was talking about in intention, um, I feel every day, I start my, in day, my day with an intention. And it may be while I'm driving into, the wor into work, it may be while I'm laying in bed, it may be in an active meditation. You know, I think a lot of us feel like things have to be all or nothing. I've got to sit silently and meditate for a half hour every day or it's not going to be beneficial. But we, you know, and face it, in today's world, we really can't do that. So sometimes little things can help shift our energy. Um, and just quietly in your mind in the morning, um, you know, asking that any negative energy that you've picked up be drained away and go into the earth and transformed into love and that you call back any energy to yourself that you've given away that it that it be brought to a loving state and then kind of set your intentions for the day your intention like i one of my favorite intentions intentions in the morning is to say um 
may I create heaven on earth for all I come in contact with today. Um, may I be a beacon of love and light today. Um, just anything that you want to say, may I be a source of love today. And, and when you set those intentions in the morning, it automatically just kind of sets the energy for that day. And the days I forget to do that, um, don't go as smoothly for me because I may be having a little more chaotic energy. Um, and then now, of course, mine may, what I'm going to do here may be a little more, um, if y'all want to do it with me, fine. And if you don't, fine. I, I, and because like she said, if different modalities, different things affected different people, like she was saying, some people wanted the pendulum, some don't. If anything we're offering or I'm offering, does not resonate with you that that's cool maybe something else will so just you know you take what you want from things and um and some things may seem more interesting than others but right now what i'd like us to do is just put our hands over our heart because that and i'm going to close my eyes so i can't be seeing y'all um and it just amplifies that energy in our love center our heart chakra and we're gonna, um, we're gonna take two deep breaths in. And when we take the, those two deep breaths in, just think the word peace and that you are breathing peace into your heart. So breathe in. And then breathe out. And breathe peace in again. And breathe that out, out into the world, spreading it out into the world. Now let's breathe in joy. And breathe in joy again. And breathe in love. And breathe in love again. And now, you just did energy work on yourself, by the way. Now, let's send energy work to everyone else on this program. With the, if you do not wish to receive it, it's always with permission. You can say, no, I don't want to receive it. And send it out into the world to whoever you want to send it to. With the clause, we'll say, as Annette said, to everyone's highest good only, and only with their permission. Send that love out into the world. Send it to your loved one. All right, I got goosebumps. So that alone shifted my energy. Um, I hope it shifted y'all's. Um, because the other thing I want to talk about when she was talking about the like the frequencies of things and energy, emotions have have energy. So, like if you're and we're all human, so I don't say this. First of all, no one judge yourself or anyone for any emotions. We all have them because we're, we're we have to do this human thing on Earth. So, but human but emotions have frequencies. They have energy. So if there's a very if your loved one is having a bad day and having a low energy day, you know just even you being in a higher energy will affect that person. So if you can bring yourself up versus letting your energy kind of sag down with theirs, if we can stay elevated at work or around other people, it raises the energy in the room. And you all have seen, you know, you all know that you go into a room and there's been a fuss or a fight going on and you go in and feel it, you're feeling the energy. So, you know, maybe you crack a joke and it lightens everything up. It's like you're shifting the energy. And that's just these, these little things that we're talking about to do at home. But another one, I'm gonna go through a few things because, uh, excuse me for looking at my notes. She mentioned the tapping. So I thought maybe, well, let's just start with one. Um, on your hand, between your pinky finger and your ring finger, below that knuckle, there's like an indention right there. And this is from Donna Eden's work. I don't know if y'all have ever read any of her stuff, but 
um, that's, that's, this is the fear tap. And so it's a way to, if you're feeling panicky or fearful about something, tap right there. I don't know if you can just, I'm just tapping between those fingers and breathe. Breathe. And then you switch and do the other hand. See, and that's very simple stuff. But she, when she, y'all were talking about the meridians and the uh, acupressure points were, this is, it's science, but it, you know, without her intro of the scientific part of it, it all seems a little out there, but now we know it's not because it's, it's their science. And then I like this one too. Um, this one, we're going to tap on our third eye. And this is a way we're going to tap joy in. So if you're having a really good moment one day that you're like, oh my God, this is like such a happy moment. Tap your forehead, tap that memory, that energy in there. So right now, so everyone think of a really happy moment that you've had recently or just some really happy moment and just tap your third eye that chakra right there and tap that happiness in there. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so, and this is another one, I'm gonna show you one more of, of Donna Eaton's that I love a great deal. And usually you would do it standing. Um, and I'll start with that, first of all, too. Another way that I kind of get grounded and connected to divine if I'm feeling really scattered, and I try to do this every morning, too, is to, with your feet on the ground or sitting on the ground, just have the intention. She was talking about intention before. Have the intention that you are connected to the earth in whatever way you format that, whether it's nature or Mother Earth or whatever you, but that you're grounded to the earth. And then also have the intention that you're connected to, you know, divine spirit, God, Jesus, goddess, whatever verbiage you use, but that you're connected to divinity and that you're connected to your own wisdom and feel that connection. And so now with your feet planted firmly on the earth, start with your hands on your thighs. And ideally we would do this standing, but I, you wouldn't be able to see me, so I'm going to sit. So you bring your hands around your thighs, circle them around, and bring them in prayer pose at your heart. And then just raise them up to the sky. And just imagine your arms are like a funnel, just a funnel pulling that loving divine energy in healing, loving energy, nothing else. And you'll feel your hands start to tingle, just like Annette was talking about and Allison about when they felt their hands tingle doing work. And now scoop that energy up and bring it right into your heart. Woo, and say thank you. All right. Awesome. Yay. Love it. <laughs> okay. And then talking, going into, a whole, I could go to a gazillion different places, y'all realize. So Allison, if I get way getting too long, you just stop me, girl. But there's, you, there's so many different tangents you could take off on ways to shift your energy. Um, no, um, Karen, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Y'all, I've got to step off for a two o'clock meeting but that doesn't mean that we have to stop. As far as I'm concerned, Karen needs to keep going and I'm gonna watch the video um, once once we record it. So there's nothing that says we have to stop at two. No, nope. so I got it. Wanna, I got you, just, y'all keep going. I'm yeah, let's just there. keep going. This is good stuff. Yeah, if I it could, reminds me of praying with the body. Yeah. Okay. Well, bye y'all. Bye, bye, love bye, you. Awesome. Love you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will, I'll try to not go too much longer unless y'all uh, really want me to. But another um, thing too, earlier we were talking about the ice and everything outside and the beauty on the limbs. Connecting to nature is one of the, to me, the quickest ways to change your energy. And if you can't get outside, it's just really focusing on a flower or on the 
way the water is dripping off the limb outside my window and the way the trees are weighted with the ice and you know touching the earth and um you know again not caregivers don't have a ton of time to sit and meditate <laughs> so everything can be a meditation you know you, you can be doing the dishes and just really i've been reading some of uh, uh meditation book reminding me of that that you know you can be washing your hands and that's a meditation you can um we've been here in this house trying to slow down and be, eat more mindfully it's like everything can be a meditation and that can shift your energy too anyway we were talking about mudras this mudra which is prayer prayer mudra um we see it all the time and everyone uses it but it, it balances your energy it, it's balancing the masculine and the feminine and it's it's balancing your energy so even just sitting for a moment with your hands in prayer pose and breathing i don't know that we'll have time for a ton of breath work today but if nothing else just do deep breathing focused feeling the breath come in and feeling the breath go out and feeling your hands together at your heart You're shifting your energy. It's wonderful. Um, here's another hand position I'm gonna show you if you're feeling a little fearful or like, like you just aren't feeling connected, like nothing's going right. If you take your hands, hopefully y'all can see me, and just kind of intertwine the fingers and put them over your heart center too and do the same breathing. This is a, this is a gesture of um, trust of unshakable trust, of unshakable trust in the universe, in the divine. I used to give this one to folks a lot in the facilities that were scared nearing end of life and um, they seemed to feel like it brought them great comfort. And then another one you can do is, um, if you put your left hand on top of your right one and make a little bowl and your thumbs are touching the tips of your thumbs. And if you're sitting, just even if you're at work or what, you can just stop whatever you're doing for a moment or two and put it, put it in your lap like that. And that's kind of like a, sur I surrender, thy will be done. I'm willing to receive information, knowledge, peace, whatever, and just just breathe like that for for a little bit very nice and another quick way y'all can um change your energy is is with water because you know like annette was saying when she was saying you can measure the energy on trees or this or that um water holds its own energy and water will hold energy um, of us in a way so like when if, if you're drinking a glass of water you can always hold it in your hands for a minute and and give the intention again the intention of what you want maybe it's peace love um, there was a study done on water um, and i'm forgetting the gentleman's name right now y'all may have seen it but where they looked at molecules of water and ice with different like hateful words and different loving words and the water actually changed it changed formation so if you sometimes on my glass of water at work i'll actually take a permanent marker and write like the word love on the bottom so that it's always <laughs> going into the water but you can do that with your hands too and focus your intent on that water before you drink it um, and also in the shower, like if you've had a day and you feel like you've picked up a lot of people's stuff and it's on you or you've created your own, um, just ask that the water be blessed and that it help rinse all that stuff off of you as it's cleansing your body. It's also cleansing away the negative energy and that it goes down into the drain and down into the earth. Um, and that it is transformed into love, you know, and just have it. And then when that's done, just visualize yourself filling back up with white light and love. And just that easily, you've really shifted your day. Um, 
you know, so just there's so many little simple things. Um, another good way, I mean, there's stones, there's music, there's color. Annette had alluded to color, you know, visualizing a color. Um, if someone else is upset, sometimes I try to visualize them surrounded in a bubble of pink. <laughs> um, to try to help calm them down. Um, or I can do that on myself if I'm having a rough day. Uh, but sound is also something that's so simple to use. And for those of you who have cared with, for people with Alzheimer's or dementia, my mother has Alzheimer's and um, she's constantly humming or she was last time I saw her, she's in a facility. I haven't seen her for a while now, but constantly humming. Humming is a natural calming. We can all do it. I mean, we can just like right now, it's just, mm, just doing a nice long hum is calming. Um, I have some tuning forks here. You know, tuning forks are a useful tool. Some, he, I use them sometimes in my energy work to, uh, here, I'll sound a couple together for you. Just, I don't know how it'll sound on the thing, but I'll, t I'll ding them and then, you know, scan them over somebody and you can feel where the energy gets stuck and then move it on out with these tuning forks. But the sound alone can shift our energy. So I'll just quickly do, I don't know how it'll sound over here, but just if y'all want to close your eyes and just feel the vibes of this sound and see how it feels. How did that sound over the speakers on a computer? <laughs> Hopefully pretty good. So anyway, um, and the other thing, you know, the home with your home, like when I just did that here and she was talking about working on people, you can also clear your home of, you know, because sometimes your home or your car will hold on to this energy since we're saying everything is energy it will hold on to energy of, you know, perhaps someone being in a bad mood or a uh, fuss or a lot of news on the TV, <laughs> um, you know, things. So there's a, you can cleanse your house. And I'm sure y'all have heard of smudge or incense or things like that to cleanse, but you can also just picture your house filled with white light. Just picture your house filled with light and with the intention that it's pushing all of the negativity out. Um, and you can do that with your car. You can do that at your office. Um, you know, a lot of different ways to work with the energy. And I know this has been just, just a couple, just a very few. And I could go on and on, but I know this was not um, scheduled to go, I think, till two. Um, so anyway, I'll stop there, I guess, since we've covered a few things quickly. But is there... Does anyone want me to expand on anything or go on or um, questions? There's probably some questions. Um, I personally would like you to expand all afternoon, but <laughs> I, could <have> <laughs> I could too. <laughs> in that, and I have been um, fussing at my co office mate to tell her that we need all of those things in this office because she causes me all of this stress. And so. <laughs> <laughs> Are you visualizing her in a pink bubble right now? <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to be like, every time she starts, I'm going to be like, keep my joy in. Um, but in all seriousness, why don't I open it up to everybody else for questions? Because I know there were questions for Annette as well as Karen. And um, I will let y'all um, take the, um, I, I missed my word here, but we traditionally Caregiver Academy was always scheduled from 1 to 2.30. It would just finish if we finished sooner. So as far as the Zoom meeting, we're good until 2.30. Oh, okay. Well, how does everyone feel? Do you want to do some more breath work or anything else? Or do you want to go to questions? What do you think, Shannon? Uh I probably don't have till 2.30, but I'm trying to hang in here as long as I can because <laughs> I am I am at, on the job. It was taking my lunch All break. Right. Well, let's, <laughs> we'll go to questions then since it's dwindling.
a comment. I, I could see that this has great potential to use with caregivers who are so stressed and who have trouble dealing with their loved ones because I talk about mirror neurons where you oftentimes the person you're caring for will pick up on your state of mind and your anxiety level. Absolutely. And you can force yourself to calm, take it slow, be caring and loving. It will change the facial and the attitudes of the person who has dementia mm -hmm. just right there before your very eyes. So I could see how that many of these techniques, there could be a course developed for how caregivers could use these. Yeah, uh, because not only for themselves, but in dealing with others. You know? Right. Well, and sometimes that person, if they're at the state of their dementia where they can't really do any of this, sometimes to me, if you can do it in yourself and yeah. then just lightly touch them. That's what I mean. You you're teach just holding the space for them yeah. to do it too. And it, yeah, because they're it's like animals, you know, they pick up on your vibes and, um, you know, but again, I, you know, you don't want to judge yourself because we all are humans, but yeah, if the, any of those little ways that can kind of help shift energy and you're holding the space to try to help that person be calm too. And then it, it benefits everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Yes. Yeah. This there's, is there's a lot of holding space and energy work. So. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's been very interesting and I'm so glad to have experienced this. It's been a great. Thank I'm going to go get all the books I can and read about all these little techniques. <laughs> <laughs> There's a gazillion out there. <laughs> yeah, it was funny that you mentioned Karen, um, uh, Donna Eden. I just got her book because that's one I had not read before and I'm really enjoying it. Oh, so. I love it because it's got all the short little things like that, that, you know, you don't, I mean, there are longer things too, but again, we don't always have time for that. So um, yeah, definitely. What is the title of Donna Eden's book? Um, I'm trying to make a, I can look it up. Is it, I can, I can see up. the picture of it in my mind. I like it. Oh, I'll look it up. I can look it up. I jotted her name. I'll look it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and she's. To, and to go back to yoga too, because uh, I think, was it you that had spoken about yoga earlier? You know, sometimes people feel like they have to do this whole big yoga set. And sometimes you really don't have to. I mean, one of my favorites just sitting here right now is just to breathe in and arch breathe. forward and Mm -hmm. you know breathe out and arch back and mm -hmm. it's it's actually called energy medicine that is her that is her yes, most famous medicine. book mm -hmm. she did a, a i think it's like a 10th anniversary because it's it's been well received for many years oh yeah it's been out a while i think yeah thank you thank You're you welcome. yeah and um i think i said before another one that you that is interesting as well as Dr. Bruce Lipton's uh, biology of belief, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and um, and then Barbara Brennan has the hands of light. Um, there's there's so many I stacks. <laughs> I, know. I just too. love love it. So. Yeah. Have you been involved with any studies, either of you, that? Uh, are measuring before and after? I mean, you say that you have clients or patients rate their pain level. Uh, have you collected any of that information to pass along to you, like departmentally? Mm -hmm. I, I haven't personally, but I know Way Forest has. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think her name is Christina Ross. She is. Um, a, a physician or a doctor, Christina Ross, who works with Wake Forest research side. She has done a lot of um, work on um, um, doing healing over cells and watching the great regrowth. And, and um, uh, her book, I believe, is called Etiology. Um, but um, she has, and I believe there's been other studies at Wake Forest, and I'm sure there has, um, you know, throughout the country. I just haven't personally been involved in the studies. Yes, and I have not been involved in the study. Um, I've mainly done my the energy work I do on the side. When I did do it for a hospice program for a while, um, and that was more for comfort at end of life, of course, which is why I really like the term energy therapy and used that on the plan of care because you know I healing comes in many forms, but you don't want to give people false hope who are at end of life. So um, energy therapy worked well, and the the 
modality that I studied. That was the term that we used. And um, no, but I, I did get great joy out of like, I just remember one gentleman who, you know, in the backwoods of Wilkes County, he had no idea what I was doing. Um, but he gave permission, of course, had to, but he, he would call, he would, he'd, he'd say, when you come and put your hands on me, and then <laughs> he'd say, will you come back right smart, come back right smart, like he just was, he would call and wanted me to come, and it was obviously bringing him comfort, and then of course he ultimately did pass away, but it just, you know, so it was just good to see that it brought people some comfort, and um, at that stage, too, and to try to almost be a bridge energetically that when it's their time to go, that it'd be yes. easier, you know. Yes. Um, but no, you. There, there was not a study done with that other than my own. Your yeah. personal experience. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's worth, anecdotally, that's worth a lot to yeah. bring strength to the program and to, as you're teaching other people to do it, to show the positivity of it all. Right. So, yes. You know, and I think, too, which is why I liked Annette's program so well, too, leading into mine, because, you know, it could, it's fearful to some people who have never been exposed to anything. Um, and, and so, you know, it brings it validity, validity. It brings it um, that it's not that unusual. And to me, it's not because to me, what is a prayer, but sending exactly. energy to someone, I mean, you know, it's all, you know, people like she was showing the history of laying on of hands. I mean, it, it's something that's been done forever. It's just some of the verbiage I think is frightening to people. And, um, so it makes it, uh, you know, more, th th this is the age I think we're going into in the world is becoming more open to things that are more loving and healing for each other in the world. And uh, we're going through some rough patches to get there, but I think we will. <laughs> yeah, which is, you brought up the autoimmune. That's a theory of mine that the world changing so fast is perhaps a uh, reason for so much autoimmune going on energetically for people but so i think the more anyone can bring themselves to balance energetically um that that's helpful for anything because it's really you healing yourself with your intention with divinity you know so that energy it's never going to hurt uh if your intention is good it's always going to help you know you put in your hands you know um you know, also when we pulled in the energy in like the funnel, you can also lay that like on somewhere that's causing you pain and you're directing that energy there. And it's a very simple way to do energy work on yourself, you know, or someone else. Um, you know, just because you haven't had training doesn't mean you can't funnel energy in from the loving universe and put it into the person you love with their permission. You always want permission, but right yeah and if they can't give permission because of dementia or something then i usually will say that if their spirit wants it let it use it if not it'll go in to heal the earth and then that kind of you know and just always with the clause that it's in their best interest you know, no. has this been used um pretty regularly with cancer patients cancer treatment patients for example yes. undergoing therapy chemotherapy and that type of thing the healing yes, I would say so. When you and that there with the wake, you probably know better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we have, I mean, we have um, magnetic clearing or chelation that we do with intention where we help clear some of the negative side effects out of chemotherapy. Um, um, but yes, it's, it's used quite frequently. Um, uh, at one time, um, Baptist did have an on-call service for healing touch where any patient could just call and ask for healing touch and one of the volunteers would go to them and i think they were trying to develop that again um bring it back but um of course that's probably all been put on a little bit of hold now with covid but we, we hope that we can get back to that so does wake forest have uh you know the mindfulness based uh pain relief programs developed by john kabat zinn up in massachusetts does wake forest have that now it's just about all over the country do they have a program for mindfulness teaching mindfulness to the pa patients who are undergoing chemotherapy or anything like that? Um, I don't know. I mean, well, I'm, we're out at Davie, so I'm a little bit removed from the cancer center. Um, I know that we do do studies. Um, in fact, some of our joint patients here have been receiving um, some acupressure studies for nausea, for post-op nausea, 
Um, and so they do studies all the time, but I, I don't know if they have a mindfulness particular one. You probably could get on, um, if you go to the Wake Forest Baptist uh, site for integrative therapy, the whole department, you might be able to find some more information there or contact someone. Um, so many people with dementia also have uh, complicating conditions and the caregivers are dealing with so many different fronts at one time. Right. Uh, that's the reason I'm, I'm interested because of, I truly try to work with my caregivers with some mindfulness and that seems to help our really a belief in a higher power. Right. It's one of the big things that gets caregivers through. Mm -hmm. uh, and so all of this that we've talked about today about energy that just to me just goes hand in hand with uh, the higher power mm -hmm. and belief in something bigger than oneself. Right. It is. It's all connected. Right. Yeah. Um, I was, you were speaking about pain earlier and autoimmune. Um, if anyone is interested, um, there's a documentary and it's, it's not a big budget documentary, but it's called On a Scale of 1 to 10. And then you can get it off of YouTube. You can watch the full, vid, the full movie um, documentary. And um, the reason I know about this is because my daughter was featured in this documentary. Um, she's towards the end, but it's a, it's a lot of different presentations about alternative ways that people have, have found to successfully deal with pain and chronic illness. And um, I mean, there are a lot of uh, documentaries out there. Um, but that was one that you can watch for free. So, cause not all of them are for free. <laughs> um, and it, it, you know, it utilizes a lot of these same principles. Right. right. So. Thank you for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. Thank you. Did we lose Allison again? We did, didn't we? <laughs> I know I've had to go in and out. Seriously, multitasker today. That's right. You're, you're multiple personalities today. <laughs> I am. So we're at 2.23 officially, and our Zoom call was set up for um, 1 to 2.30. So we probably should wrap up here shortly. Um, I'm not nearly as gracious of a host as Allison is or Angela are. They're much better at words than I am, but know that I am sincerely grateful um, Annette for your time and Karen for your time and I probably speak on the behalf of everybody that's still hanging in here even though we've gone past two o'clock um, and also hang on I've got a pop-up that I got to get rid of since I'm um, videotaping the link for this will go out um, hopefully I'll be able to get it out um, tomorrow I'm not an expert at this sort of thing um, but we have been able to video and get links out and have had success with other caregivers that are not able to come at this time, be able to um, view these late at night. It's actually been surprisingly um, successful and helpful for folks. So we just had um, Carolyn, I think, that just joined us late and asked about the link. So we will be able to get that out so that y'all can review or you can share it with some of the folks that um, you're aware of that this would be good information for. So with that, um, we have I don't know how many minutes left, but if there are any other questions, um, and then we'll wrap up. Okay, I hope everybody um, goes out and um, puts joy on the bottom of their water cup <laughs> and um, takes some of these techniques to help us get through some of the stress and some of the wonderfulness of um, the holiday season. Okay, and this is Cynthia, and I'd just like to express my appreciation to Annette and Karen. Both of you have pr excellent presentations, and I've learned quite a bit today, and I do appreciate it. Hope you all have a nice holiday. Merry Thank Christmas. You. Thank you. Thank so you, everyone. Thanks for doing this. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Enjoy you. your holidays. Yes, happy Bye -bye. holidays. Bye. Thanks, Shannon. Hi, Teresa. Bye, y'all. Bye, -bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. No, it's not me.